Hello everyone out there in YouTube land and welcome to my channel. My name is Nacho Cheese. If you're new here, please go ahead, take the time to like and subscribe. And if you aren't new here, welcome back. So today I'm gonna be checking out the Thunderbolts trailer and then also just gonna be talking about some of the cool little things that I found out about the trailer. I wanted to do a little research for this because especially there is a character in this, um, there's a character in this movie that I'm not familiar with. I've spoken before in a lot of my Marvel um, movies or, the, or I've spoken a lot before in my videos that have to do with Marvel movies that literally my knowledge just extends to the MCU and not to like the comic books necessarily so a lot of times when these movies come out I kind of have to do like my own research to figure out like how accurate it is to the comic book and like are they giving a good representation of how the story actually was because that's one of the things I do enjoy about the MCU even though I'm not a huge comic book person myself I do en enjoy the storytelling of it so I like to know if like the movie I'm gonna go see is accurate to the comic book so for this video I did have to do a little bit of research so we're gonna go through this trailer and then I'm gonna share a little bit of what I know for some of the people out there who are like the MCU fans like me but may not know a lot about and then I'll get into specifics but it has to do with the character Century because before this movie I had never heard of the character before as I've said a few times now like I'm just not familiar with the comic books so anyways we're gonna go ahead check out the trailer kind of talk talk about and break down I guess Easter eggs there's a couple of cool things in this uh, trailer that I had seen and I also want to kind of go over some of the discourse I've heard um, about it or some of the critiques I've heard not even just to do with like the AI style um, the AI style poster that came out that like everyone's ragging on but just like down to like what Bucky is doing here um, what are Yelena uh, what are Yelena's motivations you know what's David Harbour up to so I don't know um, we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit too about I guess some of the things that I've heard people say that they're not looking forward to because some of it is fair but I think we're really in a big time we're hating Marvel and hating Star Wars basically hating nerd culture right now is like <laughs> people are making money on it now, okay not necessarily making fun of nerd culture but I think that right now ragging on things that may be more so mainstream is profitable so I don't know if you're a fan out there of the MCU I'll be honest I've seen the trailer um in parts from what I've seen I I'm more excited about this than Captain America um, 4 coming out and as we go through the trailer I'll talk about why as well because even just from the way the trailer is laid out from the fight scenes that I can see in it from what's given away in it I can tell already that I'm going to enjoy this a bit more than Captain America and it's a shame because I have been a fan of the Captain America movies so anyways without further ado let's just go ahead and hop into it. I click leave on board. Your subordinates will be reported to DoorDash HQ. Alexi, it's me. Open up. Milena? Okay. okay, so I may be one of the only few people who did not, or I, I may be one of the only few people who did see Black Widow, and I enjoyed it, and here is why. Because I truly believe that Scarlett Johansson uh, appreciated, loved, and respected the character of Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff. So when she made that movie, I think she is genuinely an MCU fan. I can say that. I think that she's someone who did her homework. I enjoyed it as a female viewer of Marvel it's the style I enjoyed I liked it more so than what I think they were going for with the Marvel so I don't see a problem with every now and then catering to your female audience it's okay dudes it's totally okay I like seeing it though I like the darker grittiness of Black Widow um and I enjoyed how she uh did uh, Natasha Romanoff. I think it was great seeing that side of her. But anyways, if you did not see Black Widow, um, that's where these two characters come from. So we got here uh, Alexi, which was uh, Natasha Romanoff's um, foster dad, essentially, and his uh, 
and uh natasha's sister yelena so last time we saw yelena okay last time we saw alexi was at the end of black widow and last time we saw yelena was at the end of hawkeye i believe so it's been a, it's been a minute since we've seen both of them yelena and then sorry about the wait uh, it was an important goal highly classified lot of work lot of work many irons in fire you feel fulfilled? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so full. So fulfilled. So but why do you ask this? What, uh, what brings you here? There is something wrong with me. An emptiness. I'm just drifting. All right, so fun little Easter egg or little point out I want to make that uh, I found out. So it shows here that Bucky is wearing, um, so I guess this is like a seal or like a pin that uh, members of Syndicate or people who are operating in Syndicate. So to me, that makes sense. Some people might have a problem with that, but you got to think about where we last saw Bucky in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. He was with Sam and what does Sam do? We've seen Sam work alongside with the government before and Bucky used to be a soldier he was a soldier in World War II and I don't think it's really outside of the realm to see someone who basically is like his career a career uh soldier is now working with the United States government I figured also this is probably the best way that they can keep an eye on him because he really did do some messed up stuff but just a little point out that I thought was a cool little tidbit because I've been wondering what Bucky has been up to I've said a million times I'll say it again he is one of my favorite characters in the MCU just like the darkness that within him all the things that he had to go through and then getting to see how he overcame it and made um, amends and atoned for everything he had did all the hurt and pain I don't know something about his character arc just has always spoken to me I'm always been a fan of his character so I'm not surprised at all to see him in a little bit more of a mature capacity maybe he's not so much more hands-on anymore and I can imagine he really doesn't want to be honestly with everything he's been through I don't have a purpose. I thought throwing myself into work and I don't have a purpose. Okay they, okay they did john walker a little dirty though with that line and i don't have purpose and they show him okay so the last time we saw john walker 2 was in falcon and the winter soldier now you may be someone who did not watch it all you need to know is he was the guy who in that show essentially when sam turned down the shield and said hey no i'm not gonna be captain america that was steve's thing i just want to be a normal civilian now they went ahead and basically found another very decorated soldier without the serum at the beginning of the show falcon and the winter soldier john walker this character did not have the serum but he did have the shield now a lot of people did not like what happened to his character in winter and the falcon soldier what's strange though is i i've read and i've heard people screaming like john walker did nothing wrong but to be honest i don't think i've ever really heard anyone criticizing saying that he did do anything wrong at least in the show the perception and the perspective i've got of john walker was not bad it was just miss guided we have to remember all that steve rogers captain america stood for and think about it this way the actions that we saw john walker engage in in the show are not actions that we saw captain america so i don't know it just it it is unfortunate what happened to his character he he got did a little dirty but I don't think in any contrast, were there people saying that he was the villain, that he did something wrong? I mean, he definitely wasn't the good guy. I don't think he was meant to be. Um, even as the show was going along, there were always little sprinkles of nuggets that John Walker was a little unhinged, a little bit more emotional and irrational. And those are all things that we don't see in Captain America. I wouldn't say so much he's the anti-Captain America, but I, I think that he really is more the embodiment of the everyday man who has struggles, um, has demons, has a dark side. And unfortunately, I mean, we saw a moment where his dark side won and i think it's reasonable for the audience to be kind of like okay cool this isn't the captain america guy um and that's you know that's just my thought on it but the the it, it's funny in this trailer how uh though you hear the the um voiceover for the line um 
<laughs> and you just see a poor depressed John Walker oh boy but I'm interested to see will this be his redemption kind of like how in Captain and the Winter Soldier Bucky kind of had a redemption uh, in my eyes John Walker um he wants to be seen as important and I think that's what was his downfall to begin with I hope that's not the case in this movie I thought throwing myself into work was the answer. No! Okay. So I, so I do really like this scene and I like it because it is remin reminiscent of the um, Natasha Romanoff, the Black Widow scene in Iron Man 2. Our first introduction to Natasha Romanoff. She has this awesome fight scene um, where she's in a hallway that's more lit. So this is kind of like a contrast to that is what I guess I'm going for because in Natasha's fight scene, the hallway was a lot more lit and... Um, not as dark not as dirty and gritty feeling but i think it's really cool now i've heard people give the complaint oh what can little five three florence pew do against all these men i hear you but if you go back and look she's not doing hand to hand the way she is fighting them and i'm not a fighting expert i'm just an enjoyer of movies and action movies okay so just say i notice things i'm a noticer the way her fighting style though is in this movie makes sense because it essentially just looks like she's throwing around their own body weight like using their body weight against them or using physics against them and we've seen Natasha do the same thing and I think that's realistic for how we've seen the Black Widow's train in a very dancery almost like um gymnastics kind of style very uh limber and um flowy I think a lot of it is using physics and leverage and other and your opponent's body weight to throw them around but um so and i'm not chilling for i'm not sticking up this is not a sweep i'm just saying that fight is believable to me I love the way the music slows down here but okay so this is definitely avengers tower 1000 percent, it's avengers tower so last we know that uh we were seeing it being sold in one of the spider-man movies and then we don't know what happened to it after that but it's totally possible that the government bought it i don't see why they wouldn't uh buy it but this is 100 percent avengers tower you can tell from the paneling um you could tell from the elevator that yelena got out of <clears throat> I love that whole scene, but I also agree with everyone else who had the critique that that knife should have went through Yelena's face. It should have went through her face. John Walker is a super soldier. There's absolutely no reason why this uh, knife should not have gone like right through her face. Let's take a look like right there. That should have gone through uh, her face. But I enjoy that fight scene. And I also OK, so here's a reason why i really am excited about this and it, it, it this may be a little reason but it's kind of big to me okay so i'll let's go back now sometimes in movies there's a point in the movie where i'm guessing the writers come to where they're starting to set up their the the overarching plot the theme and they're gonna have to get all the characters on let's say the same train track and there comes a moment where all the characters have to make a decision that's gonna get them on the same train track so we can get this movie going right okay let me take you back to a little movie called no way home <laughs> i wonder if anyone knows where i'm going with this okay so in no way home peter parker goes to dr strange and says dr strange i need your help i need to make all these people forget everything so that me and my friends can go to college and despite everything we know about dr strange and his character up until that moment there is no reason why he should have said yes had dr strange said no the whole movie would end it right then and there fight me that's just my opinion okay granted i enjoyed no way home because i grew up on toby Maguire's spider-man so when i saw that i fangirl hard i was one of the people ah! 
like I was. I love Tobey Maguire. I, those were my Spider-Mans. Now, I'm pumped by this movie because that's the only example I could think of right now, but Marvel has done that in a few of their other movies where it just comes to this moment where everyone needs to get on the same page. And I am not convinced that the means and motives they got everyone on the same track can track, no pun intended. I don't believe, I believe that No Way Home literally could have ended right then and there at Cosmita or um, the Sanctum Sanctonium, so the Sanctum Sanctimonious, the Sanctimonious, oh Lord, the Sanctum Sanctorum right then and there on the steps. Dr. Strange could have just said no. And it never would have happened. He said, no, dude, I'm not doing this little spell for you. Now, in this movie, I'm getting the vibes of like a saw setup. They're kind of getting put in a situation where I don't think they'll be able to say no, to be honest. I don't think the way Valentina is setting this up and entrapping them. In a way, I think it's going to cleverly pique the interest enough. And especially Elena, considering in most of this trailer, they told us she doesn't know what the hell she's doing anyways. And we have uh, John Walker, who is on his own little redemption arc after losing the position of the new, new Captain America. I'm not really sure where Ghost is at at this moment. We haven't seen her since Ant-Man and Wasp. And Taskmaster has just got out from under basically being controlled, brain controlled by her father. So it seems like at least three of the four people we've seen so far will have good reasons. I think we'll be able to com be convinced to go along to move the story along. So just the fact of that is why I'm excited about this movie because that shows me that some thought was put into this and I appreciate that. And that's my little. Oh, oh no. Who are you? Uh, I'm. I'm... Oh, oh, no. Who are you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Bob. Who sent you, Bob? Nobody. Are you all here? Okay. So, so this is a character that I am not familiar with and I have a feeling if I'm not, maybe some other people may not be as well, especially if you've only watched the movies. So this is Robert Reynolds, AKA Bob, AKA the Sentry, AKA the Void. And I did have to do a little research on this because this character has not appeared in any other MCU movies or show. So if you have not seen some of the Disney Plus shows, you saw this trailer, you saw this character, you said, who the hell is this? You were not far off. They have not been introduced yet in the MCU. So as far as I know and what I have found, this is a new er comic book character, but it has been around longer than the movies have been out. So it's a pre-established character. It is supposed to be Marvel's version of Superman, except this character um, essentially was a addict a drug addict who and i could I, I could be wrong i from what i read i believe he's a drug addict who snuck into a lab drank a serum which essentially was the so, super soldier serum they use on steve rogers except incredibly potent he drank it it ended up basically making his molecules and him himself super advanced and also cause them to have a split personality. So there is the void and then there is the sentry. And I think what we're being introduced to now is Bob, AKA the sentry. We might, I have a feeling we'll see the void a little bit later, maybe at the climax of the movie. And that to the Thunderbolts have to go up against and Valentina is hiding it. So I don't think even though we have little drippy drops of super special secret serum being in this storyline, I don't think it's going to be the overarching like May MacGuffin like it's going to be in Captain America, if that makes sense. So woo, I've been rambling a lot. Let's knock this out. I'm enjoying this trailer. I enjoy the MCU. It does make me happy. Um, I know right now hating on the MCU, hating on Disney and um, Star Wars and all that is entertaining. It's marketable. It's profitable. I do think, though, this might actually be a good movie. I'm not going to hate on it. I'm going to give it a chance. You were all sent? Everyone here has done bad things. Shadow Ops. Robbing government labs. Contract kills. Yeah, so? So, someone wants us gone. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, honestly and truly, when I first saw this part in the trailer, I did not know who this was. So if you did not see Black Widow, this is Taskmaster. I can't believe if I, I can't remember if I already gone over who this is. So this is Taskmaster. I'm gonna show you guys what Taskmaster looked like in Black Widow, cause it's actually kind of funny. So the character itself is Antonia, I believe it's pronounced Antonia um, Drakeoff. So that's Drakeoff who ran the Red Room, who basically made Natasha who she is. It's his daughter. Now we've seen Loki tease, much red. Dragoff's daughter. They did something bad to an individual name, Antonia Dragoff. This is her. We get to see her in Black Widow. So you honestly, if you haven't seen Black Widow and you want to go see this movie, you might actually have to watch Black Widow because it won't make any sense. But anyways, okay. So even though Taskmaster has been redesigned into a woman, because in the comic books it is a man um in black widow they had a male stunt double play uh taskmaster so i'm actually i'm not a fan of the reconstruction of the mask and the costume in general i actually liked it better it felt more marvel-y in black widow and that's what i mean by i think scarlett johansson does her research taskmaster looked more mcu ready in black widow than she does in here i'm not really sure what's up with this outfit it's giving me like they were trying to do the ronin maybe i don't know with the hood and everything i don't know that's just me but when i first saw this character um in the stills for this trailer i was like who the hell is that i already didn't know who the sentry was but it turns out this is just uh taskmaster what the hell? Well, there's, well, there's a lot happening in that little sequence, but we got like a dream sequence uh, that looked pretty cool. So yeah, we're seeing it all get together. There was a cool little dream sequence there. Oh, and that, okay. Yeah, that's what I missed. So yeah, that, you know, it's getting to the point where the MCU is going to reference itself. I know a lot of people um, have an issue with that, but you got to remember it's 2024. I The first time we saw Loki's scepter was in 2012. Okay, so 12 years ago was the first time we saw the scepter. Um, what I mean is there's a lot of individuals that are alive right now who probably didn't even see Iron Man, who weren't even alive for Iron Man. So for all of us who are a bit older, who started maybe like for me, so like Iron Man came out when I was 18. So I was a young adult when the MC really started all of their shenanigans. So you gotta think there's a lot of individuals right now who are probably like 10, 11, 12, who were born when Avengers came out. So they're, this is, this pretty much is for them i think um if you've been watching it for a while you kind of get you're like oh no the mcu is referencing itself again um i've seen the breakdowns where you know they've zoomed in this is um given that this is loki's staff there's like a picture of hawkeye i guess this was supposed this is supposed to be iron man this is like um probably like a battle of U new york remembrance or remembering all the old heroes they probably got a lot of chitari stuff in there so just within the context of just like the existence of the movies it makes sense that at some point it's been around since 2008 2007 2008 it's gonna reference itself i'm okay with it what else was in this little sequence there's a lot she changed her hair last time we saw her it was purple and again bucky so yeah i think he's there um bucky's trying to live like a normal life i can tell from this look in his face though he might be the one to figure out that there's something going on with the sentry or the void if that's the way that this is going i bet you it's going to be one of those things because he instinctually he's always going to be like looking over his shoulder so um but i think he probably is working in a capacity with the government but i don't i think that bucky the winter soldier will always just like have this extra sixth cent for trouble I was muted. That's a cool, cool little sequence. That little dream sequence right there. That one. I thought that was really cool. I'm going to stop playing it, I promise. <laughs> it's 
it's giving me like inception vibes that whole thing right there i just like it i'm a sucker for like some some cool that there are good guys and there are bad guys I like that whole scene of them shooting at Sentry and then we get to see like what um because I had to look at what his powers were essentially like he is impenetrable so I think it's kind of cool that we get to see the scene he just looks like kind of like over it entire like maybe he's been trying to like escape again so I got a feeling like um so oh so what I learned about his character is that initially like so essentially he forgot who he was um the whole world forgot who he was he actually had it was dr strange and reed richards um made it so that the world who would forget who he was so i'm guessing that's the theme they're still going with he doesn't know who he is he probably is just super confused and knows that he can't be shot <laughs> could you imagine waking up one day and then you just find out you're bulletproof you're like oh shit here we go again and there are bad guys what's the plan this could get messy. Okay, when, you, hey, when you see that shot in retrospect to when you saw John Walker um trying to plunge a knife through Florence Pugh's face, uh yeah. Bucky is also a super soldier. This is how strong they are. So I think everyone's criticism is pretty valid about them messing with uh, the power levels in this one, but this is a dope scene. <laughs> Eventually, you come to realize that there are bad guys, and there are worse guys, and nothing else. And there are worse guys, and nothing else. Yeah. Okay. Yep. This is definitely Avengers Tower. Here's the bar, um, famously from when uh, what was it? When Natasha and uh, Hulk have their little moment, and then when Tony is antagonizing Loki. So yeah, this is definitely um, Avengers Tower. And I learned something cool. Uh, so there's a previous scene where uh, in this trailer where Yelena is looking at the blueprints, and if you zoom in, one of the blueprints says the Watchtower. So apparently, the Watchtower was the headquarters for the Century, and canonically in the um, in the comic books uh the tower the watchtower is located not to be confused with the the watchtower from the Witnesses. <laughs> sorry that's a bad joke uh the watchtower is uh where the avengers tower is located so essentially too it's like close so i i gotta look it up it'd be really cool if they touch in this in the movies apparently the void has a certain look to it um or the the tower has a certain look to it but it's almost like it's cloaked in reality so that's pretty interesting it's like it's always there but not there kind of thing but essentially so it looks like maybe um valentina uh Allega de, de fontaine is trying to figure out a way maybe to uncloak the tower that'd be pretty dope to see in the movie her uncloaking this like crazy dark tower that's where the avengers tower was I'm glad though to see they're bringing it back. They are bringing it circle. It feels like Thunderbolt is more on track with the idea that the MCU had than um, Captain America does. And I know that for a fact, too, and I think I'm pretty good in that assessment based on the fact that Captain America was rewritten like four times. Look at you, so adorable. <laughs> oh my god okay here's a huge thing that really bothers me this is my critique my biggest critique for this trailer they should have waited to show bucky they should have waited until this very scene they shouldn't have showed him back at what like it was like two minutes in or something yeah they should have waited until just this part and this have been the only part they showed bucky I think less is more and I think that really would have got people a little bit more interested I there they kind of edited it this backwards but I am glad to see Bucky she's bulletproof
Welcome to the end of the video and thank you for sticking around. So I just finished reacting to the teaser trailer for the new Thunderbolts uh, movie that will be coming out May 2025. I believe it's May 2nd of next year. And honestly, I think that I'm going to give it a chance. I want to go and see it in theaters. Um, before I checked out uh, the trailer myself or before I even uh, made this video, I went and watched, uh, I'll be honest, I check out Screen Crush and um, New Rockstars every now and then because I am a, I am a movie fan or I'm a, a Marvel movie fan so I do like to nerd out and watch the breakdowns from other creators um I don't have the patience to do it and I'm not nearly enough as a comic book fan so shout out to them go ahead and um check those out they did it justice with a lot of the easter eggs and um tidbits that I couldn't get to in this video so go ahead and check them out honestly I think we are a nation divided right now when it comes to like Marvel movies and Lord of the Rings and Star Wars it is very divided and I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I don't believe that wokeness is being interjected into a lot of our new mainstream media and it is affecting the quality of the content. With that being said, I do think the quality of this content, particularly Thunderbolts, looks okay. It looks digestible. I'm going to go ahead and check it out. So go ahead and let me know in the comments if you're going to be checking it out. Let me know in the comments, though, seriously. Like, how are you feeling about the MCU right now? Are you still a fan like I am? I mean, the MCU has been around for almost 20 years. It's 2024. We're about three and a half years away from it. So I don't know. I'm going to go check it out. Go watch it for yourself decide for yourself if you're gonna see it you're gonna see it if you don't you don't it's fine just right now i know everybody is it's popular right now to hate on marvel and disney and lord of the rings and all that good stuff but um i don't know i'm here to throw a little positivity out there it looked good in my it to me to me it looked good so i'm gonna go and check it out um anyways i hope everyone has a great weekend um if you're fearing the storm be safe out there i'm getting a little bit of the weather um from it. it's been really stormy but anyways uh yeah peace